Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a defending tutorial with your host, Spoonie Pizzas. So today we're going to be covering off offline defending. We're going to be looking at two types of defending. We're going to be looking at playing an all-out defense conservative style, and then we're going to look at a frontline pressure and aggressive style. So we're going to be looking at the all-out defense style with conservative pressing. And the reason I chose those tactics was because I was Vasco da Gama. I wanted to defend in numbers and just hit Barcelona on the counter with just a few players here and there. There's two reasons why I play all-out defense and conservative defending with a team. One is for counter-attacking opportunities if I wanted to produce a team that sat back, soaked up pressure and hit teams on the counter very quickly. And the other alternative is because Vasco da Gama's defenders have got 70 or less pace and acceleration or speed and acceleration that's my choice for choosing all out defense and conservative defending the key to playing all out defense and a conservative style well is all about maintaining your formation keeping players in positions that are going to close off gaps and then trying to get as tight as you can to your opponent they find a gap here and i realized i couldn't cover get anywhere near coutinho so i select the goalkeeper and just move him across to select the goalkeeper you just hold your player select button and click your right analog stick down and then it's just a case of um, positioning him in the right place when there's in the wide areas just try and get as tight as you can but not too tight you see how I left a little bit distance there then as soon as they try to perform a skill move or try to turn that's when you can really close the distance and win the ball back so the key to using all-out defense and conservative style well is all about staying goal side, maintaining your formation, plugging any gaps using your player select button and right analog stick. Defending is usually in your half of the pitch and you're going to lose a little bit of control there. So when they're at the edge of the box like this, you want to be nice and compact and be able to win the ball back. So good positioning is vital. And I, I quite like this here. How uh, Suarez dives and then he starts limping. But like I say, you can you can slow YouTube down using the controls in YouTube if you want to see any button presses. Now we're going to switch it up to frontline pressure. So now in Barcelona, I'm going to have more of the ball um, and I'm going to defend from the front. I'm playing quite a high defensive line and playing quite a compact formation as well. So you, the difference here is it's all about very very quick player switching um, covering passing lanes getting stuck in at the earliest opportunities so as soon as they get the ball out try and challenge for every single ball if they play it long to their striker what you want to do is position a player in behind certainly if you've got cover as well and the reason for doing so is because you want to stop them laying it off to their supporting players with frontline pressure you want to be doing what I call first touch tackling. So you can see here he plays the ball in. As soon as he takes a touch, I'm in and winning the ball back. The reason for doing this is because it takes the player a second or two to get the ball under control. Okay, I'm gonna slow this clip right down because there's a few things I want to show you. And the first thing is how quick I'm player switching using a combination of the player select button and the right analog stick. And also the secondary press. So here I'm cutting out the passing lane with one player before switching to my secondary player using the left bumper. As I get closer to the ball he plays it backwards and what I'm going to do here using the right analog stick I'm going to flick that and select the player in the top left corner of the screen whilst applying a secondary press to press the ball carrier. That allows me to then close the distance on the person receiving the ball, closing that gap, and allowing me to get a challenge in. Unfortunately, the ball ran loose here, but let me take a second to explain how the player switching works. So, if you've got a transparent arrow above your player's head, if you press the player select button, that is the player that will be selected. If that's not the player that you want, then use the right analog stick. To select your defender so you need to mix up your player select and also the right analog stick buttons and then you need to combine it in with your secondary press so with the transparent arrow or marker above their head that is who is going to be applying the secondary press 
certainly when you're defending in their half of the pitch, I tend to use the secondary press on the nearest player and adjust my positioning with other players around dotted around the pitch, just trying to cut off all the passing lanes to stop them uh, getting out of their half, trying to force them to play it long. And like I said, use the first touch tackling to win the ball back, as you saw in the examples before. But as you can see from here, it was a constant press, constant pressure. It's really stifling for the AI to deal with. And eventually, as you can see in this clip, they just turned the ball over. And here's one more example of just fast player switching and cutting out the passing lanes. So watch how I switch players quickly to cut off the two passing lanes, winning the ball back and give me a great counter attacking opportunity. And that brings me to the end of this tutorial, ladies and gents. I'll just cover off a few things. So I just want to summarize about the pros and cons of both um, all out defense and frontline pressure. So with all out defense and conservative defending, um, the best thing about it is it's easy to maintain your formation, keep men back in numbers. Um, if you're playing a team with uh, small strikers and you've got big tall defenders, this could uh, make it very hard for your opponent to break you down. Um, however, you do lose that control. Um, they can pin you back and it can it can feel like it's very difficult to break out your own half. Um, whereas frontline pressure is great for keeping um, the ball in your opponent's half. Um, certainly if you've got a good ball playing uh, team like Barcelona, you can literally just keep the opposition pinned back. However, obviously, you know, they do have that threat on the counter. Certainly if they're playing like two strikers, um, you know, maybe one is an SS where they can just knock it down and then play, an, play a through ball over the top. That is, you know, you're always going to be at the risk of uh, those quick counters. But if if you're facing a team that's got slower pace strikers like Mandzukic, for example, then you can you can absolutely play frontline pressure knowing the fact that you haven't really got to worry about him running in behind because your defenders should be able to catch him up. Anyway, that's all from me, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to smash that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you again in my next video. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.